Welcome to the new Fly Fisher. I'm Brian Chan, your host for today's show. We're on Campbell Lake, located near Kamloops, British Columbia. It's late fall, the fish are hungry, so let's get out on the water and see if we can catch them. That was awesome. Let him go back to live another day. These are extremely strong fish. Here you go. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, good fish, good fish. We talked earlier about having the optimum conditions. Here we've got a perfect example of the family Heptogeneidae. Uh, very music, flat. Sweet music, sweet music. This is why you need a lot of backing. The new fly fisher is made possible thanks to scientific anglers, makers of Mastery Series fly lines, Sage Performance Fly Rods. Loon Outdoor Products, fishing with a conscience. Today we join co-host Brian Chan near Kamloops, British Columbia to learn some advanced stillwater techniques. Brian is a noted aquatic biologist, author, lecturer, and stillwater expert. The location is Campbell Lake, about 35 kilometers from Kamloops. It is late September and another beautiful day to be out on the water. It is also an ideal time to hook into some really great trout, if you have the right tactics to do it. Today, Brian will teach us rigging techniques, such as why suspending your fly at the right depth is critical, and also he will discuss fly line choices for still water fishing. I'm going to start off fishing Campbell Lake today with a floating line, about a 12 foot leader, a strike indicator, and I'm going to be fishing this chronomid larval pattern or we also call them bloodworms. There's a lot of chronomid or midges in this lake. The larvae live for two years in the mud and they get quite large. You can see this flies tight on a, a 10 2x. And I'll be fishing with a strike indicator and we're anchored in about seven feet of water. So I'm gonna suspend the fly about six and a half feet down. It's so important in the fall to see something move, see some fish move. You've got to remember that there's not a lot of insect hatches, so you look for moving fish. And at least tells you there's some fish in that area because trout can, it's a big area. It's not like a river. Lakes are not like rivers. Where in a river, you can see the pool run, riffle and flats, and you know where the trout are going to live. In a lake, it's like a black hole. And that's why a depth sound is so important. And understanding something about the structure of a lake the shallow shoal area, the drop off, the deep water zone. They all play an important role in where trout will live or where the food will live. That's why we concentrate so much time fishing in shallow water. It's because that's where the vegetation grows, that's where the habitat for the bugs are, and that's where the trout are going to come to have dinner. So I was just about ready to move and I'm winding in and some and a fish grabbed my fly so it was moving fast through the water. So I'm going to switch to an intermediate sinking line which sinks at about one and a half inches per second and I'm going to strip it in so move the fly a little faster through the water. It, uh, the fish aren't real happy now so maybe that'll um, get one of the more aggressive fish to, to grab on. This intermediate line system is perfect for fishing that shallow shoal area, 10, 12 feet of water less, because it sinks at about one and a half inches per second. And so you can, just by varying the time you wait, you can get that fly right down along the bottom and then sweep along the bottom, and then bring it up through that water column. And I've got a, a leech on, a, a green leech, and we're just waiting about uh, 20 seconds for the fly to get down there near the bottom and then once it's down there, I'll start a steady hand twist retrieve, bringing it up along the bottom and then up through the water. Hopefully we'll intercept the fish. Oh, they're not moving.
Nice fish. Oh, beautiful fish. Nice jump. <laughs> nice jump. There. A lot of spinning around. Whoa, there he goes. Way out there. Pick, pick that slack up. He's on the reel. Oh, yeah. Nice fish. Get this guy in. There you go. Oh, yeah. They're starting to move now. I can see more fish moving. So I have to wait them out. And when they're going to start feeding, but in the fall they should get pretty, pretty aggressive sometime during the day. Some days it, it goes all day long. And there's so many lakes to choose from in the Kamloops area. <laughs> it's hard to decide which one you're going to go to for the day. Pump, lubricate it, get the water out of it. Oh, just slide it gently into its throat. Depress it so you get a suction. Back it out. And there's a beautiful Campbell Lake. So now we got something in there. We'll just take our vial. And we're gonna, should be shrimp. And if anything, then there you go. It's zooplankton. So zooplankton, this is interesting, they're all alive, so they're a small tiny invertebrate that really layers up in the water, thick bands of it, and um, it's pretty hard, it's impossible to imitate those with a fly, but the fish do go on them because it, they're easy to eat, and um, it's always good to fish leeches when fish are on zooplankton, because it's it's more like, a, you fish it more like an attractor. Now I thought the fish would have shrimp in it, and maybe they will later on today, but that's zooplankton. And if you look closely, you know, they're all just, they're all alive. So we just pump the throat of the fish. You can be pretty picky on the exact depth zone these, but they want to eat this, eat today. So I'm probably casting out in depth, 10 feet of water out there. So we can't see the bottom because there's pretty good algal bloom in the water and it's tannic stain. We don't know where in that 10 feet of water the fish want to eat, what, what zone they're comfortable eating in. They could only want to eat within six inches of the bottom or a foot of the bottom or between seven and a half feet and nine feet or seven and a half feet and eight and a half feet. And that's why an indicator is good for playing with those different depth zones. And the, fish. and the rule of thumb, oh yeah, good fish, is to always fish starting closer to the bottom and higher up. And I just changed, I wasn't getting any strikes, so I just lowered my indicator so I was closer to the bottom. And first cast out there, we got this fish. So you gotta be ready to keep switching to try things, but good rule of thumb, when you're fishing shoals, shallow water in a small spill water, fish your flies closer to the bottom and then higher in the water column. Unless, ob unless there's an obvious uh, mayfly hatch or uh, caddis fly hatch and you can see them eating the adults. The trout are just safer eating closer to the bottom. Oh, beautiful, beautiful fish. Oh, under the boat, under the boat, there he goes. This is a nice fish. And just a beautiful beautiful fish. Another thing I wanted to point out is you can see in the water here all the algae and that's a blue-green algae that's growing in the lake. 
the blue-green algal blooms get very thick in the summertime, uh, so thick to a point where it, it just covers the water and you can't see anything in there. You can still have really good fishing in a lake that's got a full blue-green algal bloom because the algae is all hovering within the top one and a half meters trying to photosynthesize. And so below that, below one and a half meters or so, the water is going to be clear. So there's a beautiful Campbell Lake rainbow stocked probably a year ago, not maturing next spring. So by this time next year, this fish is going to be well over three and a half pounds. And this is the products that you see from the Freshwater Fish Society that stock these thousand lakes in the province. Beautiful fish. Just let her go. She's gone. So, I like that. Nice day, the weather's. Sun's out, wind's calmed down, it's warmed up, being able to take one layer of clothes off. Hopefully we take some more off today before, uh, before the nightfall. <laughs> Finally found some moving fish. They're starting to splash around a bit in here. Hopefully we can get a few more to bite. Uh -oh. Got a fish here. Switch to a, a bright olive green leech. We're anchored in about eight feet of water. And these are pretty scrappy fish in here. Now, so here's a beautiful Campbell Lake rainbow. We'll just get the hook out. It should come up pretty easy, it's barbless. There it is. And there's a, get a beautiful look at a very pretty rainbow trout, a stock trout. Um, we stock about, the Freshwater Fish Society BC stocks about 4,000 fish rainbows a year in here. They grow fast. This is a two-year-old fish. It'll be three next spring. Just let her go. And I'm just going to show you the, this is a little leech we're using. So it's a olive green in color. And you can see it's also tied on with a loop knot. So again, we're taking advantage of the movement that that gives to the fly. We've got our indicator here. We're anchored in seven feet of water it's probably eight feet deep where we're fishing and uh, so i've got it pegged at about seven feet and uh, we're just uh, slowly inching it in or letting the wind drift it around but that up and down motion uh, when that fly is going up and down or retrieved provides all kinds of action to the fly In BC, when you when you fish alone in a boat, you can have two. You can fish two rods. If there's two people fishing in a boat, then it's one rod each. You never know. It's got to try. Keep going through the box. That's pretty flashy for for lake fishing, but when they're on zooplankton, like that fish was earlier, um, sometimes you need something a little with a lot more flash. These fish are still here. They haven't left. They're just, they move a little bit and then they go off. But So we just change flies, put something flashy on, it hits the water and it's sinking and they grab it. So you just got to be prepared to go through the fly box. And it could be frustrating. You might change flies 15, 20 times in a day, but uh, if you don't, um, you take the chance of only catching a couple fish or one or two. There he is. See, you gotta. So, we, so we've got this really flashy fly on, and 
I've made two casts with it and caught, hooked two fish. So, and so you just never know. It's a little guy, but at least it's a fish. At least it's a fish. That's a beautiful little rainbow. And that, that's a pretty rainbow. Nice spotting on them. So we're just going to take the fly out. And I'm going to try to catch his great grandfather. There he goes. So a lot of people, we get a lot of emails and phone calls from, from people that want to visit British Columbia particularly the camps area, you know, where do you get information? Well, you gotta, there's a number of websites, and certainly our website at the Freshwater Fish Society, gofishbc.com, we've got uh, a lot of information about all the lakes that we stock, every lake that we stock in the province, and we're currently putting up uh, fishing guides for the different regions of the province. And then there's also bcfishing.com, which is the BC Tourism and Sport Fishing Alliance guide that has information about fresh and saltwater fishing throughout the province. And so there's good opportunities on the web um, to find information about where to go fishing. And then once you get to a spot, whether it's Camelot's or any other uh, community in the province, then you want to be visiting the local fly shops to get more detailed information about specific hatches and what lakes are hot or what lakes aren't. Really nice fish here. Oh, I moved over right to the weeds, right to the edge of the weeds, and the wind's blowing down, and so I'm just inching this fly back in along the weed line here. And this is a beautiful rainbow. Whoa, whoa. 50 degrees in the water today, so um, they're, they're scrappy. I'm using 10 foot rods and uh, five and six weight, this is a five weight, 10 foot for five. And that longer rod, that 10 foot rod is really good for boat fishing when you're fishing lakes, especially when you're fishing with indicators too, that longer rod helps you uh, with, uh, to keep everything um, uncluttered and casting those indicators, those big indicators is easier with a longer rod. And especially when we're fishing long leaders too. But this is a really good fish. It hasn't jumped, but Going under the boat. The other thing I'm going to remember is my boat is double anchored. I've got two anchors, one out the bow, one out the stern, so the boat's not moving. And uh, I have full control over my retrieves. But with two anchors out, you got to remember that they're out there when you're trying to land a fish. You keep them away from those anchors. There we go. There's a beautiful fish. Now, there is a pretty rainbow. We got him. And there, that's the fly we're using. So, green peacock plastic chenille body, black marabou tail, and then a bright red hackle through it, woolly worm style. And then it's got a gold bead head, and that's tied on an 8 3x hook. So, this is definitely what I would call an attractor, and um, certainly not the typical fly we use. Mostly the flies that we're using are imitative, but on days like this, when they're on that zooplankton, you've got to go to something like this. There she goes. Chronomid. <laughs> I guess you just got to keep changing. Boy, did he pull, pull the rod out of my hand. Oh, good fish. Oh. 
Oh, yeah. You just never know what they're going to need. So again, the reason why I put the chronomid people on was that this lake has a tremendous chronomid hatch in the summer months, and they're great big chronomid pupa. They're almost three quarters of an inch in length, and the adults are the same size, so they're big food items and there's lots of them. So I believe that they eat so many of them that um, they'll, you could try fishing them even, then, even when there's none hatching. And that's what I just did. I just put this on this the first cast. this guy in. Oh! <sighs> Lost him. That was a great fish though, and a great way to end the day. Even though we lost him, I hope you've picked up some tips on fishing your favorite still waters, and we look forward to seeing you on another episode. Hi, I'm Tom Rosenbauer. Hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to get all of our weekly uploads.